Good morning, and welcome to this WOW meditation for September 23rd. I hope you all are well, and I hope that uh, you are continuing to stay safe and healthy in the midst of our COVID-19 uh, virus uh, scare as we uh, continue to take very um, important precautions, particularly here at the university for our students, uh, so that we can operate and function uh, while also remaining healthy and safe. Uh, it's a good day. I, I know it is a raining outside, or actually it's just cloudy at this moment. It's, we've had the rain uh, yesterday. Um, I look at the world situation right now with all the disasters and all of the, the hurricanes and the tropical storms and the fires, and it causes me to re be reminded and uh, again, I, our prayers go out to all who've been affected. I've, I have folks uh, living in all of those areas. Prayers go out to all who have been affected. But there is one thing that always is at the center of our comfort, and that is our faith in our Lord. Uh, it does bring us comfort. And how do we know? We know by way of Scripture, by what it communicates to us, why, what God communicates to us. Before I uh, begin today and before we open with a word of prayer, I do want to remind you uh, once more that uh, if you are on campus, uh, you're more than welcome to stop in. We have a, we'll have a boxed lunch to go for you. You may safely pick those up in the uh, uh, back of the sanctuary in an area we call the narthex. So please come in. And uh, it's been neat. We've had a, a wonderful uh, group of uh, students uh, uh, come by and a few, uh, few faculty who are here on campus and a few staff. Uh, we are glad this is for you. Uh, it is uh, regrettable that we can't all meet in person. But this is a way that uh, you may experience not only visually, and I hope, I hope the meditations are this, uh, but also physically, which I pray that the uh, lunches are this, that they're a way of being hospitable, a way of embracing you, and a way of holding you in the midst of God's loving arms. Well, let's have a word of prayer. Oh Lord, we are grateful for this opportunity once more to gather together in prayer, in praise, in thanksgiving, in your word. We pray that you be with us this day as we uh, take a, a brief glimpse into your word, a brief in that a small portion, but not a brief glimpse into the magnificence of your ways. For your ways are beyond our full and complete understanding, O oh Lord. And uh, we know this. And it is that uh, which we lean upon in these times of, of uh, chaos in which we live. Uh, it is your word that uh, brings us a, a sense of normalcy, a sense of firmness, of strength. For that, we are deeply grateful. Thank you, Lord, for your word to us today. It is in our Lord's name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, uh, we've continued to move into the Psalms, through the Psalms, and um, I, I would like to do that again uh, today as I was uh, thinking about all of the flooding and the, and the, uh, <clears throat> the, the uh, hurricanes and the tropical storms and the fires, and uh, I, I, was, I was brought to the um, Psalm 46. Uh, I, it, it, it came to me. I mean, it's a wonderful psalm. It's a psalm that uh, Martin Luther used. Uh, he paraphrased and used uh, for his uh, great uh, work, uh, uh, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Uh, the psalm itself is one that does talk about the strength of the Lord. Um, Luther uses, and let me just, uh, before we uh, get in, well, let's read the psalm first. Let's do that, and then we'll take a look at it just uh, briefly at uh, Luther's uh, words that he uses to paraphrase it. Uh, psalm 46, it is entitled uh, within 
the Bible that I use, uh, God is our fortress. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved uh, into the heart of the sea, though its waters, and roar, uh, waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord. How he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariot with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted on the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. We give thanks and praise for this God's moving word to us this day. I like the refrain, and I think it's the one that we must uh, keep in mind. It's a refrain uh, within the psalm, embedded in the psalm, uh, verse 7 and verse 11. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. That would be a, a great refrain for us each and every day. As we arise in the morning and as we uh, sleep in the evening, um, it, it's a refrain that reminds us that God is a very present strength, a, a fortress of ours. Um, and it is uh, that fortress that will always uh, stand as a bulwark against um, uh, those uh, things that we find uh, that uh, are uh, causing uh, terror or, ca uh, or causing discomfort or causing despair, um, that we do have a fortress. And, and it is a fortress that obviously is, a, is one that we talk about as being a metaphysical fortress, it, and yet it is a fortress in the midst of us. I mean, the, these two things are not, com are not completely separated. Well, it is this fortress of the great and uh, God, the Holy One, is a fortress found uh, within the strength, uh, in particular in this psalm, the strength of uh, Jerusalem, of Zion. Uh, as uh, as it, there is the fear that uh, uh, during this time of the attacks and the destruction on, on Jerusalem, that um, the faithfulness of the Lord will maintain that, the, the strength of of uh, the fortress of Jerusalem. Um, and within the Christian witness, we hear in Revelation 22, uh, or 21, 22, and 23, that again, this fortress of Jerusalem continues. It will never be destroyed. Uh, this we know, and, uh, and this we give thanks for. In Luther's hymn, he uh, in the first and the in the fourth stanzas, really uh, I think capture this uh, psalm quite well. Luther uh, in the first stanza says, and we, as we would sing, a mighty fortress is a God, a bulwark never failing, our helper He amid the flood of moral mortal ills prevailing. For still our ancient foe does seek to work us woe. His craft and power are great. And armed with cruel hate, on earth is not his equal. That word above all earthly powers, no thanks to them abideth. The spirit and the gifts are ours through him who with us sideth. Let goods and kindred go, the mortal life also. The body they may kill. God's truth abideth still. His kingdom is forever. Those are great words of hope in the midst of the early 16th century. 
uh, in the midst of terror that was uh, being experienced within Christian communities. There is uh, there was great uh, uh, concern, obviously, at the time of the composition of the Psalm 46 of uh, attacks by foreign governments, attacks by foreign armies that wish to lay bare Jerusalem. But it is uh, God's word, the, the Psalm of David that we hear, that uh, tells us that there is nothing that can squash, can destroy. I mean, we even see today, the, uh, which is just a beautiful sight, to watch folks praying at the uh, what the Wailing Wall, the what is one remaining, uh, the one remaining wall of the Great Temple. It uh, is a reminder that uh, even in the midst of chaos, that um, that presence is still a bulwark, still a strength, and we will celebrate that strength uh, until the New Jerusalem occurs. Um, until it is restored in its beauty. Uh, as uh, the psalmist writes, he says, God is our refuge and strength. I mean, Luther, we hear that in his words. He, he mimics that uh, uh, with good purpose in his hymn. He says, uh, the psalmist says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though uh, there is uh, great earthquakes. I mean, these are words that are using to try to describe that which could occur. The earth gives way, meaning the earthquake, uh, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, that uh, you know, the landslides uh, that, could, that, that can destroy or cause uh, uh, mountains to give way um, uh, that uh, though its waters and, and roar and foam though the mountains tremble at its swelling um, this whole the idea of this natural chaos um, of, of, of slides of, of uh, dirt and uh, of earthquakes of torrential rain um, of which we, you know, it, it, it's interesting you see uh, these as well. They are, they are powerful events, natural disasters. Um, and yet in the midst of those, and as we see ourselves in many ways, we see ourselves as, uh, as very finite in the midst of those. No power to control the acts of nature. We rely on the fact that even in the midst of those, and again, our hearts grieve for those who've been, who've been devastated by the fires, who've been devastated by the flooding and by the destruction of mighty winds of hurricanes. In the midst of that, we know that we are still gods, and we know that by the immense amount of rescue help that have, have been moving forth to take care of those affected. That is where we see the strength of the Lord and how we live for him and how we know that his desire is for his good creation to move forward. The psalmist shifts just a bit and it says, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The shift is an important shift from the roaring waters of mountains tumbling into the sea from the movement of the earth. There is a calm stream. There is that stream that reminds us that in the midst of all of this disaster, there is still a strong movement of calm stream. And it is um, in, in the psalm as it uh, speaks about uh, that the, 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 these rivers who continue to tell us that the Most High is with us, that He brings comfort to us, that He restores us, 
and that he strengthens us. Um, again, within the Christian witness, we then t understand that sense of the strains of Jerusalem and the strains of the, dis of the coming of the kingdom. It is a similar image. It is that within all of God's salvation history, he has always been that constant stream of calm within his covenant people. At the end, we have again that the nations rage, the kingdoms totter, the, he utters his voice, the earth smells, that he is in our midst and that he is standing for us against the destructive ways. And again, our refrain is, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. The latter half of the psalm is uh, also a, a, great, uh, a, a great part of this understanding of God's strength for us. We behold his works, uh, how he makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow, he shatters the spear, he burns the char chariots with fire. They are recalling how... Um, within this psalm, calling how God has intervened uh, through those whom he has uh, drawn to stand forth and protect. He has ceased uh, the raging nations. He has ceased those who wish to destroy. It says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Perhaps if there is any one verse out of this today, it is that. That as we are in the 21st century, far from when the text of this was written, but is still as relevant then as relevant it is today. That as we stand in the midst of uh, many things that we don't understand, many things that we look toward and it generates in us a sense of fear, that we can always recall this verse, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted in the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. That our God holds us, that there is a sense of comfort for the people of the covenant, that he will embrace us, continues to embrace us, and hope is not lost. Hope continues, and our response he is once more the lord of hosts is with us the god of jacob is our fortress in that he is on this 23rd day of september as we still uh, are in the midst of 2020 and the great upheaval know that the lord is our fortress he is in our midst he is in our midst to care for us that is a certainty that is his certainty for us. May we embrace it and may we celebrate it. And may we exalt the Lord God. Let's pray. O oh Lord, we are yours. Give us the hearts, give us the minds to truly allow your words to seep deeply within us so that we may be moved and touched by the promises that you are our strength, you are our hope, that you do hold us firmly. And then no matter what we witness, no matter what we see, no matter what we endure, that our endurance is strengthened. In fact, our endurance is of whatever suffering we might have, that endurance is, is turned to a holy comfort, a holy strength. May it be so, Lord, that as we live at this time, we may fully know once more the strength of the Lord, the God of Jacob. We give you thanks and praise, O Lord, for this day and for this beautiful word. Be with us, we pray. In Jesus' name.
Well, I hope you all do have a good rest of your day. And please, please come join with us as we uh, wish to gather together as God's people to share a meal, to strengthen us. The Lord bless you all. See you at noon. Bye-bye.